Hi, my name is Andy Rourke and I'm the designer of Coalitions. In this short series of videos on strategy for playing the games, I'm now going to look at Russia. Russia starts the game in a strong position as it's at the edge of the board and has a completely secure flank. It can choose to, to go south and fight the Ottomans or it can choose to go west. Russia has four armies available, four generals available. It starts in the 1805 campaign here with three on the board, but it can soon bring in their fourth uh, army to, to give them the maximum amount of force. Again, it's important to make sure all the armies are maxed out with unit tokens if you're going to uh, start invading anywhere else. Uh, so you want to get those up to strength as soon as you can. Two routes to the west really for Russia. You can either go through the north through Sweden, so bring in an army through Sweden, garrison it on the way to get the two mobilisation points, and then by being part of the British coalition, you can use the sea lanes with British permission, get into Denmark or get into Hanover and garrison these as well, which again, as both of these have green stripes, can gain more influence for the Russians as well. So this is a, a really strong route militarily and also allows Russia to pick up quite a bit of mobilisation points and influence points. Once in the north, you really want to be um, supported by allies, really. Coming this way without being in a strong coalition can be very risky. The, uh, the British need to really bring an army across to support. The Prussians are in the same coalition as well. That's really useful, a nice strong Prussian force can really help. So if the French are in the north, again, the French have seven armies available. They only start with five on the table in the 1805 scenario, but they can soon place more and bring these forces up. Um, and this, this can be a very strong opponent. So, so for Russia to face them on their own will be very difficult. So this strategy really only works with a strong coalition. If, uh, if this is not the case, if you can't get through the north here, the other strategy is to go um, through Austria. Um, if you can be in the same coalition as the Austrians, again, being in the British coalition, if the Austrians are in the British coalition, you could use strategic movement to move up to three, uh, three territories as one go. So you might be able to move one, two, you can share a, strat uh, share a territory with a, uh, another nation, another army that's in the same coalition as you. So two, three, you could end up as, perhaps as far as Bavaria. So almost with one move, you can be right next to the French and in the position to fight them. And again, you can get mutual support from your allies. So these are the two sort of main routes into the West. Going south, if you want to commit against the Ottomans, the Ottomans have a, a capability of, of three generals in total, three armies. So um, you want to make sure that you've at least got two, maybe even three armies yourself. So if you commit to the south, it does mean you're only going to have a screening force to the west. Um, and then there's, there's influence available for Bessarabia. And also, if you can get through... Um, the Danubian provinces and into Greece, um, there's influence available for, for Russia in Greece as well. This reflects the fact that uh, the Russian Navy was strong in the Eastern Mediterranean early in the period in the late 1790s, 1800s, um, around the Greek islands. Um, and so Russia can gain influence in the sort of this Greek province. Um, so if you could uh, defeat the, the Ottoman garrison, claim this for Russia, there's more influence there. So, so there's, there's quite a bit of influence whichever way you go. And influence is the way that you're going to score on the influence track, and that's the way you win the game, by holding on to these provinces um, round after round. Um, whichever way you go, you've got to make sure that you leave a cover force to, to protect Russia. If all of the armies move into Central Europe, you are left open, prone to an attack from the Ottomans. So you always really need to leave some sort of army 
in in reserve that can protect you from either the south or the west because the prussians could turn on you the austrians could turn on you as well so you need to be careful um warsaw in the 1805 campaign warsaw starts as a uh, as a Pr with a prussian garrison um because they're in this uh, well if prussia joined the british coalition you can't attack them so it's once Brit uh, Prussia's in the coalition, the Russians can't attack Warsaw. But if the Prussians join the French coalition, or if they're not in the same coalition as the Russians, the Russians can attack Warsaw and try and take this garrison. And again, if you can convert this into a Russian uh, territory, again, potentially you can be picking up quite a lot of influence points um, each turn. So. Gaining points on your borders is, is really important. Um, so these are the, the main tactics for Russia, really. Um, either go west through the centre or to the north, or really concentrate on the Ottomans with overwhelming force and try and try and win there. Um, choosing With Russia, choosing um, your alliances is quite important as well. It, it's good to be in the British coalition because you could receive subsidies and Russia is quite poor and will benefit from, from English gold, but sometimes it's good to get out of the coalition, at least for a period, so you can attack some of your neighbors if they're also in the British coalition. So, so the diplomacy and the negotiation part of the game is really critical for Russia, knowing when to be in and when to be out of the coalitions. So if you have enjoyed this video, uh, please feel free to watch the other five in the series, and you can add any comments of your own into the uh, comment section below. Um, please subscribe to the channel and you can like my Facebook page at Formsquare Games. Thanks for watching.